Hello, beautiful people. My name is Funke Akin Lebelo, and you're watching This Nigeria. Keep watching. Publisher of This Nigeria, uh, Eric Osage, and the team from New Nigeria, This Nigeria. Distinguished uh, leaders of our people, um, Chairman of INEC is here. It would be remiss of me not to uh, recognize him. Uh, in spite of the potential accusation of uh, uh, partisanship, uh, if, if you overindulge in acknowledging that you know the chairman of INEC, it must be because he wants to do some hanky-panky with you. Uh, but that's not the case. Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, to many of us, the distinguished academic before he went on to public service, and that's where we would always know him, at least those of us from academia. Uh, so we're very delighted to have you here and to have several other distinguished um, personalities. <clears throat> this is the first lecture that this Nigeria has put up um, since the publication came into existence. And for those who have come across this Nigeria since its inception, you will know that its motto is know the truth. And of course, what it doesn't say is what the Bible say about that, uh, that this truth shall set you free. Um, I have known Eric since his early days in journalism up to the time he rose to the apogee of his career in the Sun establishment. He also made a foray into public service when he went to serve my brother and uh, former chairman of our party uh, in Edo State, Comrade Adams Oshomale as a special advisor on media and, and public affairs. And he's always been uh, a stellar performer in whatever he sets out to do. And this is why I believe many of us here have come uh, to grace this particular occasion. He has also chosen as the speaker at this event one of the most erudite, uh, prolific uh, Nigerians who in all ways also represent a conscience of our country. Um, Father Kuka, sorry Bishop Kuka, some of us would not stop calling him Father Kuka because that's what we used to know him as years ago. But he's been uh, translated into a bishop in the Catholic Church and is the Bishop of the Catholic Diocese in Sokoto. But Father Kuka is more than just a Catholic bishop to many of us and to many Nigerians. He's a foremost public intellectual. You can disagree with him, you can dislike him, you can like him. You can be in awe of him. What you cannot do is ignore Bishop Matthew Hassan Kuka. And by the time he speaks, you will know why. For those who are hearing him for the first time. Our country is going through enormous challenges. And when I received Eric's invitation, his point to me was, how would we wake up a sleeping giant? First, we have to agree that indeed Nigeria is sleeping. And also agree that it's a giant. And when you have a giant, you can approach that giant from all sides. It's like an elephant. And I believe that is certainly the perspective from which many of us uh, would approach the Nigerian state. 
But the Nigerian state is not in its most healthy state. There is no debate about that, uh, regardless of political persuasion, regardless of ethnic consideration, regardless of economic opportunities available or unavailable to individuals, our country is in the doldrums. But clearly, in every adversity, there is always an opportunity. And it is our ability to identify what those opportunities are that would take us further in this nation building journey. And now, nation building journey anywhere in the world does not happen by happenstance. It's a long, it's a tortuous, it's an arduous process. And it's not a 60 year process. Many countries have been at it for centuries and they're still in search of a more perfect union, as the American Constitution would put it. And that search must continue. However, we must see signs of progress along the way. We must be able to identify those shoots, those little acorns that will become tall oaks sooner rather than later. Because for those of us who still at least saw that good Nigeria, relatively speaking, we have a sense of what that country should be. We have a sense of what is expected of the largest country with black people in the world. And we also have a sense of the expectation that the world has of us, which we clearly have not lived up to. I hope in the course of today's conversations, we would also be in a position to identify those things that we would require to build a country where truth and justice shall prevail. Because to the writer of those lines in the second stanza of our national anthem, I'm sure there must be something in his mind when he wrote the lines. Because we can talk about unity as much as we like. We can talk about national integration as much as we want. And we can lionize patriotism and ask not what the country can do for us, but what we can do for the country. But you cannot build a country on the basis of iniquity, on the basis of injustice, on the lack of fairness, and expect unity to prevail. I know Father Kuka, I can almost guess what he would say to us, and he would say it with right humor, he would say it with uh, a plumb, characteristic of plumb, he would say it with magisterial certainty, full of wit, full of candor, full of insight into where he believes our nation should be. And we see possibilities all the time, even when we are at the nadir of hopelessness. Uh, what just happened in Anambra was a near miracle, because many of us had come to the conclusion that Anambra was going to be a bad land. We had come to the conclusion that it was going to be a bloodbath. And at the end of the exercise, we saw what transpired. We must give kudos to the National Peace Committee, of which Father Kuka himself uh, is a key player, led by our former head of state, 
uh, General Amisarani Abubakar. But I think more kudos should go to the people of Anambra and to INEC. for making what we witnessed possible. Yes, Beavers was not perfect. Yes, turnout was not what we would all have loved it to be. But ultimately, peace prevailed, and many believe that the outcome of the election is the will of the people. So, that points to possibilities, in my view, and what Nigeria is capable of achieving if we put in our very best into what we do. Uh, I want to congratulate this Nigeria for bringing us together. This is a people's parliament. This is the role the media has always played in Nigeria, right from its pre-colonial days to the days of the Abad Macaulay to the days of Nambi Azikiwe. That is what the media has always been in Nigeria. It is the people's parliament. It is the defender of the defenseless. It is the voice of the voiceless. And our media must not shirk its responsibility and continue to play this role. That is why we must commend Eric Osaibe and his colleagues for convening this people's parliament once again and bringing Nigerians from all walks of life to this August assembly to reflect on the direction of our future as a nation.